All right, so it's been a while since we actually received some huge Pokemon news outside of Mystery Gifts and Terror Raids. Uh, this one's going to be pretty big, and a lot of you guys in my live streams were talking about, whoa, when Pokemon Home drops, are we getting an update in regards to this game? Is this game going to get patched? Well, it looks like we're finally going to get our wishes granted because apparently, due to some credible sources, leaks, info, whatever you like to call it, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet 1.2 update to launch in late February. And there's also some new Terror Raids. I think uh, the Terror Raids, uh, we're going to go over it a little later in this video. But let's go right into it. But before we do that, go ahead and like, subscribe, guys. That is the best way to support me for free. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. I can't believe I'm saying 10,000 to begin with. But here we are. We're nearly there. So close, yet so far away. Join my journey. 10k anyways let's get right into it according to a community site Cerebi, now everybody knows what Cerebi is patch 1.2 for the game will be released in late february 2023 in that case it seems likely that the update will coincide with national pokemon day 2023 on february 27 if i recall pokemon home for sword and shield dropped in february as well i believe it was early february so i think they're trying to make it a habit of just releasing pokemon home compatibility in that same month kind of like how pokemon games have recently been released in november the main line of course i think they're going to try to push pokemon home into being released in february with future generations <laughs> i mean if there's any future generations because they already surpassed a thousand pokemon which has been the pretty big theme for this month supposedly now this is a pretty interesting detail that uh, i'm kind of baffled as to what they're talking about here the update will contain bug fixes and added functionality, though no details are given on what this could entail. Now, I don't know about this added functionality. Some people are saying maybe integration with Pokemon Home. Some people actually have been saying like something crazy as, oh, we finally get to hear Shinies in the Wild, which I feel like that should have been in the game to begin with, you know, especially for people who are, you know, visually impaired, you know, colorblind people. Uh, they can't really tell or distinguish between shinies and non-shinies in the wild and there's obviously no stars or no sound to tell you whether there's a shiny in the wild and it's kind of messed up i feel like you know you're if you're playing a pokemon game i want to know when i encounter a shiny of course you know there's the auto battle mechanic where if you auto battle a shiny pokemon like it will cancel it or it just doesn't allow it so that would be a pretty good tip but other than that, like, that's, I don't know. I really don't think it that's going to be it. I mean, hopefully it's something useful, something that integrates the game a lot better. But we'll see. Now, this actually has been confirmed that there will be an update for the mobile version of Pokemon Home in early February. But that will only enable you to check your battle data from ranked matches in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Of course, you need to have the Pokemon Home Switch version to be fully compatible in order to trade Pokemon back and forth. Or transfer back and forth so the, the mobile is only there if you're have if you only have the Pokemon in Pokemon home so we need Scarlet and Violet in order to transfer those Pokemon back and forth in order to use the mobile version to its fullest extent and then of course they're saying some stuff here about the bug fixes or the patch or whatever you know yes Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for me is fun it's a fun game even though I'm not playing it that often anymore, you know, new toy syndrome or whatever. But there are a lot of technical problems with that game. There's performance issues. There's graphical issues. I mean, a lot of it from day one was a bit unplayable. And I'm not going to lie, my game crashed two times in my first playthrough of Pokemon Violet. Now, hopefully this patch is able to just make the game look a lot more presentable, a lot more playable. That way, you don't alienate a portion of your fan base who doesn't want to play the games because they're simply unplayable. I mean, I'm hoping moving forward, Pokemon, Game Freak, whoever's in charge of these games start to realize that, yes, you know, Pokemon games are going to sell like hotcakes, but the fan base is going to expect a lot more. You don't want another situation like Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> you don't want another, you know, Battlefield 2042 where, you know, has a rough start or people having problems playing the games and there's just going to be outrage and you really do not want to piss off the pokemon community we all know how vocal the community is and they definitely i think they're what they're starting to realize is that they're trying to 
be more community, like more, you know, I guess more transparent. They want to communicate more with the people, but I feel like they're still a little bit uh, non-transparent when it comes to that kind of stuff. But hopefully this patch does fix up a lot of things because the game is enjoyable. And obviously they talk about the initial patch of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I mean, yes, the only big glitch that I really encountered was, well, two of them. One of them was my game crashing and two, the loop of the Elite Four. Like it just plays the first five seconds of the song or track and it just looped it, <laughs> which I was wondering why the Elite Four music was not banging that crazy, but that's why. Anyways. On to another interesting news. It says here, February is shaping up to be a busy month for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, as a new wave of terror raids have also been announced, featuring Fairy-type Tandemass, Tandemass from February 13th to 15th for Valentine's Day. Oh, that's cute. As well as a new 7-star terror raid with an unknown Pokemon of the Poison type. Hmm, interesting. From January 27th to 30th and February 10th to 13th poison type i wonder if it's like a base poison type or terra poison but anyways i think that's pretty cool that if they keep releasing new pokemon like charizard cinderace like of that caliber hey i'm cool with that as long as the pokemon isn't something i can't find in the game then or is not something i could find in the game correcting my grammar there i think that would be really cool i think that will keep the interest of the game you know, intact, but the poison type, I wonder what kind of poison Pokemon, I mean, there's plenty of poison Pokemon, but we just don't know what it is, as long as it's a powerful Pokemon that I can use in competitive formats, hey, I'm good with that, but anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think, what do you guys think about the new Pokemon that might be in the terror rates, I mean, seven stars are always incredibly hard to deal with, but if you know what Pokemon to choose, you can pretty much solo them, I've done videos of those in the past as well, but also, let me know what you guys think about this added functionality. Is it something that will actually change the game entirely? Or is it something that can help people out in their Pokemon journey? Anyways, guys, it's your boy Franklin signing out. Peace.